Hello everyone, this is Yolanda from the Upcast channel and today I'm just going to do a little video answering some of the questions that you guys sometimes ask me in emails or in the YouTube comments and Facebook. And my husband has written some of the questions down here. Um, oh, he didn't put down the name of the person so we should... I'll go ahead and do it anyway. So here are some questions that you guys asked. Let me put on my glasses so that I could... Uh, read them okay so here um, the first question is are you married and do you have any kids um, I am married I've been married for over 30 years to the same guy can you believe that um, my husband Abel and we do have three children I have a stepdaughter who just turned 39 this past week I have my daughter who is in her also in her 30s and my son who is 27 years old um, and it says where do they live okay my one of my daughters my oldest daughter lives in Florida in Pensacola no not Pensacola I'm sorry Jacksonville she used to be in Pensacola now she's Jacksonville my other daughter is in Seattle Washington and my son lives here um, in San Diego County it's in a, the second question is where do you live I live in California, actually in Chula Vista, California. It's a suburb of San Diego, uh, and it is uh, maybe about eight to ten miles. Uh, I think it's eight miles north of the uh, border with Mexico. So we're right across the border from Tijuana, Mexico, and uh, so I uh, I haven't gone down there in a while. So, and the next question is, how did you get started on YouTube? For, I'm going to have to put my glasses on because I had a hard time to read that one. Um, I started YouTube videos um, as private videos first to get started. I was doing teaching a class uh, for military uh, spouses in my church here in San Diego. And the girls were not, we were not really getting ahead or moving ahead from the first few lessons because uh, we would do the class meet either at my house or at uh, one of the rooms at church and uh, they would forget what we taught and sometimes they would give me a call and it was hard to explain to them how to do something over the phone and then they would say well this happened or that happened and I wasn't really didn't really know what they were talking about because I couldn't see their work so one of them suggested that we just film something or uh, we had thought about doing Skype first um, but our schedules were different so we I just filmed it and my son helped me put it on YouTube and um, that's why my username was just my name because they could look me up and then they could find the video and that's how we got started and then after a few weeks or months there more people started uh, subscribing and uh, that's kind of took off um, so most of the first people I started with the first 26 people the first 26 subscribers were the girls uh, and two guys from the group so that's how I got started and then it grew from there and now all of you guys get to watch and then the next question is um, the is your is crochet your let me put it as is crochet your favorite craft what other hobbies do you have uh, crochet is one of my favorites uh, one of the things I like about crochet is that it's very relaxing I think it's the rhythm of the stitches and um, just like knitting is and um, one of the things I like uh, about crochet is that I could do it take the projects with me if I'm going on a trip somewhere or on a road trip or um, to if I take someone to the doctor's office like I you know you could sit there and, and use your work on your project so it's not wasted time and then I like to um, crochet and knit when I'm watching TV at night so it gives me something to do and um, relaxing relaxes me and I get to have fun uh, but I think my favorite probably one of my favorite things is sewing but uh, unlike crochet or knitting I can't really take a sewing with machine <laughs> machine with me and I can't really be sewing while I'm watching TV because then you're making all that noise so it says uh, the next question is do you give private classes and if you do how can I attend um, and uh, I do give private classes I used to give private classes um, like I said at church um, it's not private in the fact that it's only one on one uh, one person like just myself and then another person usually it's in a group um, I try to limit when I do have classes I try to limit it to like eight to ten people 
that way I'm able to help everybody and um, in the classes I do give uh, when I do give them they're either um, like mostly at my house people would come over I would set up sit around the dining room table or the family room set up a couple tables and then uh, and then I've also done them in the park where I took a folding table and everybody had to bring their own uh, folding chair or lounge chair and then we would meet at a park and then we would do the class there so you know like a centrally located place so if you I am going to be doing private classes but I don't say private group, group classes um, probably starting in the summer um, and they would more than likely be in my house so if you wanted to attend then you would need to live near me in Chula Vista or San Diego County and drive to my house so the next one is related to this is have you ever thought about working as an instructor at Michael's Joann's or Hobby Lobby yeah I did uh, Hobby Lobby there's not a Hobby Lobby close to me the closest Hobby Lobby is uh, over an hour away in Temecula and so I would not want to drive in that traffic uh, over an hour each way just to go teach a class Joann's near my house uh, doesn't have classrooms it's a smaller one so there's no classrooms there and the one that does have it they have their own they already have an instructor there and it's kind of far I did apply at Michael's in Chula Vista the store here um, and they never called me back I did however get called from four other stores for me to go in and interview and do a, uh, for me to go do a class there but the store I wanted to work with never called me and uh, talked to the manager she said she never received my application but uh, I told her I had applied, but I mean, obviously, if I hadn't applied, then the other stores wouldn't have called me, right? But I don't know why. Um, later on, I guess she thought I didn't have enough experience teaching. And at the end, it all worked out because now I just went and started doing more videos on YouTube. And now you guys get to watch. And so if I ever do do classes, it'll be at my house or at a um, maybe a community center or something like that where more people could attend and uh, not not at the store uh wow the next class the next question uh, the next class will be at my house the question next question is how old are you how much do you weigh and how much money do you make whoa whoa so um oh, how old am i i'm old enough how much do i weigh less than i used to and how much money do you, I make is none of your business. I, unless you were like the IRS. <laughs> they know how much. But it, that's kind of a personal question, don't you think? It's not as much as you think. I, I, I'm not making a living off of doing YouTube videos. And my husband is the one that supports us. So that's how I make my living. It says, um, and the next question says, where can I email my questions for a faster response? Um, I do have a Gmail account, but it won't be any faster uh, just because of the fact that I work by myself. I have to do everything. Um, I uh, a lot of times, like I come up with the ideas. I have to write out, you know, work out the project several times and until, until it comes out right. Then I write it, write up the pattern so that I could follow along as I'm teaching or doing the video. I film myself. I don't have a helper. Then I have to edit the videos myself, upload them, and then, you know, answer questions, comments on YouTube, on Facebook, on Google. Um, sometimes I might, I just started a blog, but I don't really post that often. Just because of the fact, because I don't have time, I'm working by myself, and uh, I don't make enough money to hire or pay someone else to help me. And so, I don't think your answers are going to be any faster, so... Um, I will get uh, I have almost 400 videos now so people will watch those and comment or ask questions on those um, and so they could be thousands a day questions you know in between all those platforms so I can't answer and uh, it takes quite a while like quite a long time and um, unfortunately I try to answer as many as I can a lot of the questions will say like what size hook are you wear using or you know what weight yarn is that or how much yarn is it going to take all those questions um, I, I answer at the beginning of the video like I'll tell you what size hook I'm using what weight yarn you know and if you need a if you need a specific like a lot of the times the projects it depends on like blankets how big you make something or so it's really hard to tell everybody crochets at a different gauge and so it's a little bit different so a lot of those questions if you watch the video at the beginning you'll get the answers 
And if some of if somebody has a question and you know the answer, you know you're sure about it, you could post the the answer also to help me out that way. But I I just can't do it by myself. It's too much. Um, besides the YouTube, I also have to you know take care of my home, wash my clothes, cook dinner for my husband. I go to church, attend different functions. I volunteer for different organizations, and just even taking care of my garden, feeding my animals. It's a lot of work for me, so I'm not able to answer right away. So I'm really sorry. I try to answer as many as I can. Okay, the next question The next question says, I love your channel and have made several of the items from your videos. It would be nice, however, if you actually took time to answer the questions once in a while. I have asked the same question three times, and I am still waiting. What is taking you so long to reply? I wrote over a month ago. I find your lack of response to be very annoying, disrespectful, and downright rude. It really irritates me. Um, I'm, well, first of all, I'm glad that you like the channel and you've been able to make some of the items in the video. So that's showing some kind of success. As far as the rest of your comments saying that um, you find my lack of response annoying, disrespectful, and downright rude, uh, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, or annoying, or rude. However, as I just explained, I work alone. I don't have uh, enough time, hours in the day to even be able to even come close to responding to everybody. Like I said, um, I don't have, you know, production team. I film everything, edit everything, upload it. I come up with my own. A lot of the projects or videos are my own um, things that I create. And even just for a half an hour video, it could take 60 video clips that need to be cut, edited. And then I do try to put a lot of them, the instructions on the screen so you can follow around along and learn how to read the patterns. Um, as I'm doing it, you could see what that written pattern would look like. So I'm really sorry if you find that annoying that you've been waiting a month. But there is really no way I would be a ever be able to answer everybody and still be sane and have a life and do everything I do. So I'm sorry you feel that way, but um, it's not going to, I don't see that changing anytime soon. Um, I'm looking for someone to help me volunteer, but you know, that's hard. People have their own lives too, so they're not able to work. So um, that's all I can say. There's really nothing much, much more I could do than that. And it says, um, the next question says, I want to know if I can sell the things I make from your videos and your patterns. Yes, you can sell anything you make from my videos or that you make from the patterns that you that I sell or that I have some free plat patterns as well. The only thing you can't do is actually sell the patterns because those are copyrighted and I have worked hard to develop those and so but yeah um, there really is no way anybody can control you from selling the things and I do get video I get uh, uh, comments or emails people saying that they're selling the items and you know you know people like them and they're helping themselves to make some extra money for that and so that really makes me happy that I'm able to help you that way so yeah you could sell anything um, from the videos um, and the patterns just don't sell the patterns I would appreciate uh, if you have like a store I would appreciate that saying that the designer wasn't me so and so and the next one is where do you get the ideas for your videos? Well, a lot of the times the videos are requests from my grandchildren. They'll ask me, like my granddaughter wanted the Hello Kitty hat, so I'll make her that. And then some of the, you know, um, other, like the Despicable Me, the Minions, Beanies, you know, my grandsons wanted those. And, um, or else friends will, you know, they have grandkids, they'll ask me, hey, can you make me a dress or can you do this or a sweater or whatever. And so that's where I make them. And then sometimes I'll see pictures on the internet or um, go to the movies. I just saw that movie Frozen, so I may be doing a couple of things from there, from Frozen, and uh, that's how I get those things. <laughs> My husband's whistling at the dogs, it's time for dinner. So anyway, that's how I get it. Um, it says, the next question says, I, I really, let me put, I really can't see without my glasses now. I really enjoy your videos. You explain everything in a way that I can understand it. Do you have any videos on how to do each individual stitch? Yes, I do. I have, if you go to my channel, All Crafts channel, um, it, the username is Yolanda Soto Lopez. I have playlists there. and There's a playlist called Learning the Stitches. And so if you go there, you'll be able to learn, you know, the chain, single crochet, double crochet, mostly the most uh, common stitches that I use in my videos. So um, there's some in there that are not 
in there and so there's even some more complicated um, stitches like the bullion stitch I know I really like that it's hard to do but it, the way that I do it it seems it's a lot easier to get that done so I have the next question it says I would really like to meet you I also live in California is it possible for you to meet up with me we could meet halfway between your house and my house maybe in San Luis Obispo what do you think uh, I think it would be lots of fun and uh, I think it probably would be fun to meet more people um, but um, you said halfway between you and me San Luis Obispo is pretty far from my house it's about seven hour drive <laughs> and that is not something I really look forward to driving seven hours to meet somebody maybe oh, I would go meet a relative or um, uh, maybe my grandkids or something uh, the people my friends who know me and um, my relatives know that I do not like long <laughs> road trips I'm not a good at driving especially if I went to San Luis Obispo I would have to drive through LA County LA traffic which is horrendous and you guys I don't know how people live there I know people say that San Diego traffic is bad but compared to um, like Los Angeles traffic or Seattle traffic or Atlanta traffic Atlanta is also Seattle and Atlanta and LA are like really hard for me to drive I don't even drive in the cities when I go see my uh, my daughter in Seattle my husband does the driving up there I do not like to drive in that traffic when we go through LA I close my eyes and just pray the whole time we're driving through there the cars are going super fast and tailgating and cutting people off and so but even if I wanted to meet it would just be impossible to meet for me to meet everybody that would like to meet I do get requests and I am planning I would like to do a little meetup I tried to do a meetup last year in Temecula and then we had some family illness and so I was not able to do that but uh, maybe if we do do a meetup, it would have to be a lot closer to where I live because I'm not good at driving in the freeway. Um, so uh, everywhere I drive is really close to me. So, But yeah, I think it would be fun to meet more people. And this is, okay, the next question is, have you ever thought about doing a crochet cruise like Mikey from the Crochet Crowd? I would go and I know a lot of other people would go. Well, thank you. I, I, I haven't thought about doing it because um, I've never been on a long cruise like that. Um, and I know that he does, I think he just, I, I think they're longer than a, a few days. They're pretty long. Um, the only ones I've gone on were like from San Diego. We used to have a cruise ship that would go, but it was just to Baja. And it was, I think, uh, one was three days. I think it was like a three day cruise. And uh, I've never gone anything really long. So, um, I tend to get motion sickness and so I don't think uh, you want to be with me for a week as I'm seasick um, for that much time so I don't know but I would like to do maybe um, do, uh, doing some classes maybe at um, just stay on land uh, but I know that Mikey does that and I think he does a great job Pro I, I don't know I've never been to his cruises but um, like I said I tend to um, uh, I never been on a cruise that long but I do tend to get uh, motion sickness even sometimes I get car sick so if I get sick in the car I don't I, I'm pretty sure I'll probably get sick in a ship I haven't tried it though um, but I haven't I haven't thought about that but I have thought about doing little uh, conferences and that way we could go and you know uh, at a hotel uh, maybe a casino something like that um, and uh, another one says how do you guys get paid? Do you make money from YouTube? <laughs> well, um, YouTube really doesn't let us talk about that. It's like, I mean, not anything specific, but we get paid from the ads, uh, you know, uh, and uh, as far as making money from YouTube, that's how we get paid is from ads, and it's not as much money as people think. I mean, I don't make enough money to be able to support myself from this. My husband, um, has his pension he's a retired firefighter so we have that and then I have a pension also so um, this that's that's how I do that and uh, YouTube does not provide enough money for me to be able to live off of that so then the next question is is other people give away all of their written patterns for free why do you sell some of your patterns I think they should all be free it doesn't seem fair um, well I know that I don't know what other people do I know some people do them free some people sell some of them and then 
Um, some people don't do any free. Um, as far as the videos are always free, if you don't want to pay for the pattern, then just write down the instructions as I'm giving them. And uh, some of them even have instructions on the screen. So you could write those down. The, I charge for the patterns as a convenience for having to do the extra work of writing it, doing. Most of the patterns I have, they're all photo tutorials. So a lot of them have, you know, like one of the dresses has like 30 pictures or different things and it goes step by step, more detail. And it's just really for your convenience. So you could just download it and print it out and work from that. Um, as far as why do I sell them? Because I need to live. I need to, uh, just like you guys have a job and you go and, and, uh, get a paycheck I need you know I use the money to do things crazy things like buy food and pay for the gas and electric and my mortgage and stuff like that so um, I just think I, I don't I don't think it's unfair it's time that I invest in that and unlike other people most of the videos that I make uh, are all for my own creations so things that I make myself come up with myself I have to test it rewrite the pattern and have the pattern like my group uh, my my crochet and knitting group at church will test things for me before I do them to make sure that it's people are going to be able to it's going to come out right so that's how I do it but remember the videos are always free and uh, I I know that you guys want me to be able to have uh, uh, enough money to live on so I hope uh, you understand that and then the next question says I noticed that you do not share your subscriptions publicly what other channels do you subscribe to and uh, what type of genres are they? Okay, well, I subscribe to, um, I don't put the subscriptions on there because um, I don't want it, it to be so crowded where there's so much junk in there. It's like hard to, to, to do that. I used to have like my playlist of like my Christian music that I like and there was just so many categories that people were, um, if you have to scroll down, it's hard to find everything on there. So I wanted to kind of keep it cleaner. The, I do subscribe to, um, the other crochet um, channels I subscribe to, I subscribe to Teresa Richardson, the Crochet Geek. Um, her channel, she changed the name to Crochet Geek. It used to be the Art of Crochet. Um, and I, I really like the way she explained things. I like the way she's really thorough. Um, but one of the things I really admire is that uh, I like other people, like even myself. Most of the things I do are my patterns, but sometimes I'll do like a tutorial for a Red Heart pattern or Lion Brand or Caron. I have permission, written permission from all those yarn companies to do that, so I'm not violating any copyright. They've given me permission to do that. Um, but Teresa, what is really unique about her, well, she's fantastic, first of all, and I think she's like the master of, you know, <laughs> teaching you crochet, but all of her videos, they're all like, uh, as far as projects, you know, hats, scarves, everything, those, those are all patterns that she comes up with and she tests them and writes them and she does all that. So that's that's really impressive. So she's a, a really great designer that way. One of the other, um, hey guys, I don't know why the camera keeps stopping. See, I'm not a technical person, so I don't know if there's a timer or something. But um, one of the other um, uh, channels I, grew, I subscribe to is Creatividades Cien. And that's from Erica. She lives in New York and she does a lot of um, videos uh, where she uses soda taps to do purses and little coin bags. And now she also does some recycling stuff and I really like her style of teaching and doing things. I also subscribe to The Crafty Gemini, which is Vanessa Wilson. And she's in Florida. She does sewing and quilting um, tutorials. She start, just started doing some videos for her gardening, organic gardening. And then she features her kids in the videos and the kids are so cute. Um, her little son, he's, he's not even five years old and he's already sewing. He has his own little machine and she showed him sewing and it, it's so darling to see him. He's really cute. And and um, now she's starting to do uh, videos uh, showcasing she lost like 70 pounds last year in a healthy way. And she's sharing some of those videos too. So she's Crafty Gemini and I have those on my favorite channels on my channel page. You can see those. I also subscribe to John Kohler of Going, Growing Your Greens and he does organic gardening vegetables and I also have an organic garden so he gives a lot of neat tips and he's here in California in Sonoma County and he also has a another house in Las Vegas I think it is so he does some um, he does a lot of field trips which is kind of neat. He films different things so I would like to watch him. Um, I also subscribe to Esperanza Rosas. She has a Spanish uh, knitting and crochet channel and she's in Peru and her uh, 
her channel is called Tejiendo en Peru and she's really fantastic. A really great teacher, a really sweet lady and uh, I actually met her daughter in Mexico when we were on vacation and I got to meet her daughter. She has a, a Mexican food restaurant in San Miguel de Allende. Uh, not Mexican food, Peru, Peruvian food in San Miguel de Allende. So it was really neat to get to meet her and she's uh, a really neat person. She was just featured on the Google um, in Mexico City so they did some interviews for her. And then um, uh, just that if you want to see what I subscribe to I just have some of them on my favorite channels and just you could check those out um, I don't subscribe to too many other things um, I'm trying to think of another one I subscribe to well I do I have a subscription to um, uh, voodoo garden and he's another guy that does like gardening stuff and he Ray, and he's really funny and really like those so those are the ones that I subscribe to and so that's kind of thing. And then the other one says, do you sell any of the items that you make and are they available? How can I purchase some of your items? Um, I usually don't, um, most of the stuff I make, I'm starting to get sell it because it's creating too much things and like, just like this little room where I'm at, there's not enough space to keep everything. Uh, up here I have a closet and it's full of stuff and so now I'm starting to sell some of those items, uh, baby sweaters, dresses, those kind of things. Um, I'm going to do a video and, and if you want to buy something, I'll put the price and then you could um, just let me know you want to purchase it and then I will send you a PayPal invoice. You could PayPal, pay, pay me through PayPal and then I will make you your items. So I did, I did do some um, uh, little sunglass cases and they have, they're also the crochet hooks fit in there perfectly. So I sold a couple of those to some of the people. I put them on my Facebook page. If you guys don't... Um, haven't followed me on Facebook. I um, I'm going to be putting more stuff mostly on Google Plus, so I really encourage you to go there. And then the Facebook, um, I have a few things there, but um, not too much. But I will be doing um, some more of the sales because I I just have no space for the things here. Um, and most of the things I do, I donate um, to caps or things like that. So that's kind of um, College CAPS is a call, it's called College Area Pregnancy Services, and they provide a prenatal care for um, women, mostly from the university, San Diego State University, UCSD, USD, and a lot of the girls have unplanned pregnancies, and they need our help and our support, you know, to help them get through this time. A lot of them, it wasn't a planned pregnancy. Some of them is, but, you know, uh, we, we try to help. And so I like to make, like, little sweaters or hats or baby booties, and then just give them as a gift. When they have their baby, they'll have some items for the baby to wear. That is made with love and so that they can show people they care. One of the questions here says, are you going to be doing the scarf and hat drive for the orphanage again this year? I would like to participate but didn't have enough time last year. Yeah, I'm going to be doing that again. I'm going to start probably accepting things um, probably in July or August just because of the fact that um, I started kind of earlier last year and um, I don't have, like I said, I have limited space. So this way, in it, it, but I do need to start getting them early enough so that, um, announce it early enough so it gives you guys time to make the items, make the hat and scarves, and then send them in, and then it gives us time to um, sort everything, label it, and then make the little cards that attach to them so that the children know who made that item and who it came from so that they, they can know um, that it came from you guys and thankfully last year because of you guys um, I just <laughs> can see my hair it looks like it's popping up um, every child had a hat and they had a scarf so nobody went without an item and that was really just really warm my heart some of you said that you didn't see the I did a real quick little video showing some, a few of the like three or four pictures of the kids um, and you said that you didn't, do, didn't get to see that so I got some more pictures kind of late and then the newsletter where they were thanking you, thanking the people that gave the hats and um, scarves. So I'm going to make another little video just with some of the, those photos so you guys can see the photos. And even when I saw the photos, I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that hat and that scarf or that one had the fun fur or, you know, the different items that came. So I'll make another video and upload it so you guys can see your what the, the children wearing them. And then the... The group picture, they sent me a group picture for the orphanage in Chihuahua with all the children wearing them. And uh, then they also made a little thank you card. So I have that. I'll pull it out and film so that you guys could see. 
So I'll make sure that you guys get enough time to do that. And then if you guys want to um, find out more about the orphanages, I'll put the link there too. If you want to make a donation, you can donate there through the PayPal. A lot of the children here, some of them, there. well obviously there are a lot of them that are orphans. And then there's some that have been uh, abandoned or taken away by the authorities for abuse or neglect or... And um, some of these kids, um, a lot of them have been abused physically, sexually, and verbally, of course, to different extents. And uh, when the children come in, when they're first taken there, um, it's just like you could just feel and sense the sadness and the heaviness in their heart. But then through the care and the love of the people that are there helping them, you could see them blossom and you could see... Uh, the love God's love working through these people and really healing these children and making them whole so it's a really great um, um, if you're looking for somewhere to help um, there's so many you know places that you can help but this is really makes a tangible difference I just got a uh, newsletter sharing where some of the uh, kids that had been there when they first started they've been there 20 20, 20 or 25 years and now they have a lot of the first kids there they're going to the universities they've starting to become um, lawyers some of them are you know different trades and just really to see how their lives have been rescued really from despair and how through these people um, they love God and they want to serve these children help them it really has rescued these children so I'll put that information it's really I've been down there and I've seen them and how these people treat these children, how hard they work, and it, it really is a legitimate thing, you know? It, it really is a legitimate thing, so um, if you want to help, I'll, I'll give you some information there. And then this, where's the, oh, here, let me see. Okie dokie. One of them says here, Hi Yolanda, it would be great if we could do some kind of reunion for some of the crafters and crocheters that subscribe to your channel. Do you plan on making any groups and how can we join? Um, like I had said before, yeah, I, I want to do some kind of a little get together. Maybe start in um, Southern California because that's where I'm at. Um, not a, I don't really, I don't do good in heavy traffic to drive so that would be kind of something good to do. So um, we'll try to get some of that. And then another another question is this I have a few suggestions and or requests for a tutorial where do I send them to you you could send if you want to have see a certain request you could just put in the comments hey you know um, I want how about this kind of tutorial I do have a long list and I'm actually working through that list as well along with the request for my grandkids so um, I the list is pretty long but you know I try to if I get the same request over and over again that's where I try to do those items because I know that there's an interest but I will try to do as many as I can but like I said um, I do work sometimes 12 14 hours depending on what it is and uh, and uh, sometimes I try to do a lot of the filming during the day because that's the best light it's not always possible but anyway um, I'll try to get some of those done for you it, anyway so that's the questions I'm going to do now because I don't want this to turn like into a two-hour video and I'll try to do some more answering questions if you have other questions just write them in the comments below and then I'll try to do another video um, and answer some of your questions um, I was, I mean, I'm going to ask, ask you guys for a favor please help me grow my channel by sharing the videos and subscribing if you haven't done it make sure you subscribe and then um, to hit the like button and ask your friends to just subscribe that's what if I, if I grow then I could get more people then more people could learn how to do this and um, then that that helps me do it and there was one more let me put on my glasses guys it says I wanted to send you a card to say thank you for all you do where can I send you written correspondence or other little items she says, I made a gift for you and wanted to mail it to you. Okay, well, that's really nice. If you want to send me a card or a letter or uh, a gift, <laughs> if you will. I still have, I have a P.O. box, and that's the P.O. box that I used uh, to receive the donations for the hats and scarves. You can just make it to me, Yolanda Soto Lopez. It's P.O. box 211-750, Chula Vista, California, and the zip code is 91921. And you can send it there and if you want to donate anything um, for um, the channel or for me or for the you know the the uh, charities I help which is the orphanages 
uh, Lily of the Valley and the CAPS program. So you could send it there. It was really great to get uh, to answer a few of these questions. I'll try to do some more. And uh, sorry, I can't answer all of the comments. It would just be impossible. I am looking for someone. If anybody's interested in helping me type out the the um, transcript for uh, captions so that I could put it on the videos and then um, people that don't speak the language of the videos and they could hit the caption buttons it could translate to their language and then that way it would help me get other help other people that don't speak the language so thank you so much for watching I hope you have a great day and remember always that God loves you <laughs>